It's a scary, rewarding, wonderfully annoying <laughs> journey. We're living in this archaic moment right now where state legislatures are providing parents with access, but not to consistent products, not necessarily to the safest products. It just brings so much relief and such a weight off your shoulders. And just to know, yeah, she's gonna be okay and this is working. We are crossing the Rockies in the covered wagon. I'm standing next to you, but you know, this is new territory. Nobody has seen what CBD does to a child for 20 years. We weren't concerned about the stigma that came along with it. Our main concern was taking care of our daughter and our family the best way that we could. The science of cannabis has really evolved over the last 40 years, and we understand a lot about the biology. Cannabidiol is the non-psychoactive ingredient in marijuana, and since it is non-psychoactive, one feels the potential harm is going to be much less, and since some of these children had truly devastating epilepsies, in which the seizures and the high doses of many drugs that doctors like myself were prescribing okay. cause really tremendous problems for these children. The first thing I tell people is, you are a unique individual, your chemistry is, in, is unique to you. You could have the same exact diagnosis as the last guy that walked in here but you may respond differently to a different strain of cannabis, a different dose of cannabis, a different method of using it. I don't know the answer, and I don't think anybody else knows the answers. There's this, this crazy dissociation between what's happening at a federal level of incredible restriction on safe things and a state level where it's a little bit of the Wild West. And states are allowing parents to play doctor and play chemist when they really don't have that experience. Every two and a half hours, okay. she's gonna get a dose. There is no one that will tell me that a parent that spends as much time with our child as we do does not know what's best for them. Millie was born March 6th, 2012. A week later, we started noticing some spasms. At about four months old, we realized that something was wrong. We took her to the hospital and determined that they were seizures. She was having roughly, I don't know, somewhere probably in the vicinity of 700 a day. They diagnosed her with infantile spasms with hypsarrhythmia um, almost immediately and put her on three different medications as well as started the ketogenic diet. not progress at all. Uh, she was not growing, she was not gaining weight. The doctors had given us a 0.1% chance that she would really do anything. They kind of felt like they, they had done everything they could do. There was no diagnosis, therefore there was no prognosis. We just felt like our hands were kind of tied. You don't want to believe what they're telling you, and so you try and find alternative solutions. And thankfully we found one. We ended up, you know, leaving, you know, a quarter of our possessions behind, selling our business, and we made the journey to Colorado. Our neurologist told us that she can't prescribe it. She knows nothing about it. Uh, it hasn't been studied, but that she recommend we do what we need to in order to help Millie. Get all that stuff cleaned out. Yeah. We started Charlotte's Web right around her birthday, and within the first 15 minutes oh, of her first oh, dose, she was wide awake and looking around. And I mean, I was just crying. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Probably within the first 90 days, we noticed about a 75 to 90 percent reduction in seizures. I mean, we've had extended periods of time that we've had no seizure activity. And when I say extended periods of time, nine days, 14 days. 
We've had times where we've backed off and not given her doses of CBD for upwards of a week, maybe a little more. And then we have times where we will have to increase her CBD. It's not as complicated now as it once was when we first got here. It was a little scary. Um, it was a little difficult trying to figure it all out. It really has been a lot of trial and error. It was all parental experience, asking other parents, you know, hey, when you see this seizure, what do you do? It gets frustrating. And then you find the sweet spot and you think, yes, we did it. Anything really can set her off and sort of make it throw off the whole balance. It's kind of a two steps forward, one step back. We have some seizure activity that are a bit more violent, that are more painful. I think the most difficult part is there's nothing you can do about it. You basically just have to wait it out. There are days that I don't know that I feel like it's hard for me to continue. No, no. And then there are days that I feel very elated and very joyful that we have her. We've gone from a place where we didn't think we would have our daughter with us very long and trying to make every minute count to now we feel like we have prolonged her life, that there is an opportunity for her to grow and maybe walk, talk, do some of those things that we never thought were imaginable. You know, I don't know what the future holds for us. You know, it is a very real possibility that Millie could have a seizure and never come out of it. You know, Colorado has given us an opportunity to be parents, to make decisions that we feel are best for our children. I, I don't know exactly why people are so afraid of this, but I think it is time now that we need to put that behind us and move on. Everybody wants to look at cannabis as, as another medicine. And we have to remember though that most medicines are one ingredient. Cannabis is not one ingredient. If you take aspirin, you're getting salicylic acid. We know what that does, we know what it is. But when you're using cannabis, you're getting 400 different compounds that are interacting and playing differently in your system. Most people, it's trial and error, it's experimentation. And there has to be a comfort level with that because that is what it is. There's no one answer. So we can say Charlotte's Web, and you know, there's a lot of hype. It, it's an excellent strain, but only if it works for you. Sometimes you have to try 10 different things to be able to find what will work. I'll be the first to admit we need more research. We need to get it off a of Schedule One drug so we can get the research done so that I can tell a parent, well, it looks like there is no long-term damage, but you can't do studies long-term if you're not allowed to do studies at all. I always thought I was invincible. You know, I always thought that this would never happen to me. And the fact is, is that no one is invincible. This disease knows no bounds. I had natural birth and she came out perfect. She was absolutely stunning, like literally was ready for a Pampers commercial. It was when she was eight and a half months old. It was, you know, I remember the day like it was yesterday. Sophie's little eyeball started to shake. And that Friday, we were in at 6 a.m. to get an MRI. Life was exactly what I had envisioned it. And then the phone rang. It was that pivotal moment that changed the course of my life forever and my family's. She has what's called an optic pathway glioma brain tumor. And I remember asking the doctor, I was like, what is this? You think of brain tumor and you immediately think death. And I was like, well, what do we do? I mean, how do we treat this? And he goes, well, there's only really one method of treatment because Sophie is so young and that's chemotherapy. It's okay, baby. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, honey. And best case scenario, we would see some minimal shrinkage. 13 months of chemotherapy being pumped into my kid and that's all we got? She was gonna have to live with this mass in her brain for the rest of her life? Okay, okay. 
And all I did was research and research and research because I just could not wrap my head around the fact that there weren't more options for my child. At this point, literally like 20 people had told us about cannabis oil, but they were all from overseas and they kept saying, you guys should look into this, you should look into this. And I first thought I was like, there is absolutely no way I'm giving my child weed. So we talked to our doctor and he was like, listen, I don't know anything about it, but if you guys have done the research, you guys go and do what you need to do. So we got started on the oils and Sophie did fantastic. She was sleepy which is the only side effect that she had from it because, you know, there's, there is some psychoactivity, the THC, but she did phenomenal. She's a little tank. I mean, that child, I swear, she must have been like a Navy SEAL in her past life because she, it, she's, I mean, the kid's bulletproof. We worked her up only to a tenth of a gram because there's so much unknown about dosing. Um, Janine, I may change it. I've got, a, I've got a couple more specialists I need to talk to. We may go to four times a day THC and four times a day CBD. So you're going to do THC, 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 and then 30 minutes later, you're going to do CBD, 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 CBD. Oh, okay. Every dose. Go to Miss Laura. Every single scan it was getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and there was more and more and more necrosis, which is not characteristic at all for these tumors. Duck says, quack, quack, quack. She stopped chemo in November, on November the 20th of 2014. Now, you know, we have found ourselves in another predicament, unfortunately. Because, like, today's, you know, this is, this is going to kind of determine everything. The kind of tumors that Sophie have are like 65 to 70 percent relapse rate. So, um, fingers crossed. Uh, okay. When we got her first scan post treatment, there was these tiny little spots in an area where there used to be absolutely nothing. We have made the conscious decision because of what we feel is best for our child to start chemotherapy again. Yeah, just, I just don't want her to have a normal life. I don't want her to have to keep going through this. It's one of those things where it's super frustrating because it's, it's parents like myself and my husband that our kids have to be the guinea pigs. We're the ones that have to try all these different approaches and try different strains and try different extraction processes and see what works because the government won't legalize it so that we can do federally funded trials. Oh, She's so big and strong. And now we're in the throes of it. We are on the cutting edge of changing medical history. And to think about what this means for my daughter and for her daughter and, and her son and for their kids, it's really incredible. No matter what she does with her life, no matter who she becomes, the, my, my greatest yeah. achievement has been creating that little, that little person. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. She's just amazing. I'm still smiling. I haven't lost hope. And we've had a setback, but by no means is this the end of her story. Bad things happen, so do good things. And I, and I, and I truly believe in my heart of hearts that we won't have to go through this anymore. I think she's going to be just fine. Right now, it's uh, scheduled as a Schedule One controlled substance with a Controlled Substance Act, which is no medicinal values whatsoever, which is ridiculous. This plant has more medicinal values than any other plant on the planet that's been found to date. Uh, there's different plants that have CBD in them already, like flax, barley, and hops have a compound in them that's similar to CBD. So I've looked at you know a whole bunch of other plants, and cannabis is, in my opinion, the most medicinal plant on this planet. Right now, the FDA controls all medicines. If you claim a product as a medicine, then the FDA controls that, and you have to go through clinical trials to actually prove that the medicine works before the, they allow you to distribute it through, say, a Walgreens or a CVS. I've been treating seizure patients for about five years now uh, off of the radar. Only within the last 12 months have I started accepting interviews. So we've 
stopped our R&D process and we've actually started production now on the oils that we make. God put it on the planet for people to take advantage of and nobody has the right to own anything that's naturally occurring through the use of a patent. <laughs> What's up there, diva? <laughs> I would have never thought that I'd come out here to try <laughs> Cannabis for Lily. It would have never crossed my mind, you know, until we got to a point where we, we didn't really have any other options. Six months of age, she started having seizures, um, kind of a downward gaze in the eyes, and um, took her in a few times, and they did an EEG and diagnosed her with severe case of epilepsy. Huh. So she's hungry today, finally. We tried lots of different medications, seizing, you know, all day, things, anything would trigger it. It became like a beast that we just couldn't really control. I'd say on our way out here, probably up to two to three hundred plus a day. It was hard to sit there and watch her while I'd cook by flashlight. Just seizing, constantly seizing. It's a very heavy weight. It's, you feel constant pain for them. You feel helpless. You feel like lost. It's, it brings back so much emotion just to relive that really tough time before we came here. And I said, we have to do something. And that's when I started Googling and found out about cannabis here in Colorado. And I said, it's our last shot. It's all we've got. The only other option was a surgical procedure to slice the brain in order to stop the connection from left to right. And that was it for us. Ready? We got the oil and we got the dosing she needed. And go, Mwah. Probably, I'd say within at least five days, I saw this clearing in her eyes. Okay. And I remember her, all of a sudden I had turned around and she was standing behind me. And she was looking right at me, you know, and she's waving. And I just turned around and I just like fell to the floor and just started bawling. I'm like, oh my gosh, hi Lily. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, everything just started getting less and less. The seizures were less. She was more awake. She was sleeping better. She was eating a ton. She was interacting with her brothers and sisters. She was just alive. It's almost like now we're meeting our Lily for the first time and she's fun, and she's sassy, and she's fun, and she's shy, and she's everything, little bits and pieces of all of her siblings. She's so happy. Can you kick your legs? Get your legs up. It keeps getting better and better, and she keeps learning more, and, and talking more, and more sign language. Moon, yeah. And noticing cars around her and the sounds they make. Cars. <laughs> Everything. She's just so in clank, tune. Clank, 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 clank. The wipers on the bus go. Swish, swish, swish. Swish, swish, swish. And who is this? Lily. Knowing what it's done for Lily and how amazing and blessed we feel to have brought this plant into our lives and into our daughter's life. I wish every epileptic child and family that wants to choose to try it would have that option. I believe in this medicine. I would give it all up in a second for my daughter to be healthy. I would give it all up in a second. Okay, here You're we go. A pro. I'm not a doctor. I'm just a mom. <laughs> Momcologist. As parents, I think we would do anything for our children. We saw this as an opportunity to give Millie hope for some success. 
It's not a simple question. The only thing I would advocate for is systematic studies. If people think this strain and this oil of consistent product and ratios of THC and CBD is effective, then let's try it and let's see if it is effective and let's see if it is safe. If it is, then it should be approved as any other drug should be. It's a sacrifice we would make over and over for her because it's so worth it and it's given her her life back and it's just so great to be able to find something that's worked. We think about the advanced technology that we have. Well, now we're investigating this plant and what it can do. And so we have to stop being kind of incredulous about it. And I think we just have to say, okay, there's a lot we still don't know. And, and it gets back to getting it off the Schedule One drug so that we can research it. But there's a lot that we do know. So let's stop buying into propaganda that somebody told us when we were little. And let's understand the science of it and allow people who are sick to use it.